Well, hello, YouTubers. Well, it's back. I had a check engine light come on a couple of days ago. I cleared it. It was a PO300 random misfire, saying all four cylinders are randomly misfiring. The problem is I don't feel a misfire. It runs fine. But today the code came back on, and I'm going to show you how to fix it. And it should be pretty simple just by doing some processes of elimination. Okay, hopefully you can see that, but there it is, a PO300 random multiple cylinder misfire. Now with this code, the problem is I don't have a PO301, uh, 302, 303, or 304. It just says every cylinder is misfiring at this point. And I have a couple extra codes on there where I was working on the engine, I just haven't cleared. But yeah, this PO300, it can be really a pain in the butt, and sometimes it's very hard and difficult. So I'm going to show you some processes and some steps here to really help you out and maybe to actually clear your code. Okay, now to tackle this PO300, if you have a four cylinder, six cylinder, even an eight cylinder, the process will be all the same. Find your coils and your plug wires. We're going to start on the top here. First thing I have to do is go ahead and take this piece of plastic off here, this a breather, because it's actually covering up a couple of my plugs. And my, uh, uh, the good news here is for me, is my coils up on top, and some coils are a little different, and some uh, engines have the coils on the plugs, but they're pretty easy to check, so let's go ahead and start some, checking some things out here. Okay, guys, now before we get started, I just want to kind of go over a couple of things uh, so you'll understand what's going on here. Now, this PO300 is a very common code, and it's probably one of the most that you'll ever see, and it is often very difficult to diagnose because it doesn't tell you what cylinder is actually misfiring. It just says all of your cylinders are randomly misfiring, and this here is what we're going to deal with now. If you have a PO, let's say, if you have a four cylinder, a PO 301, 2, 3, or 4, well, that's an easy code uh, to figure out. Uh, basically, that last number you see there, 2, 3, 4, well, that's the cylinder that's actually misfiring or giving you the issue. So all you have to do is work your way to that cylinder and start doing some uh, diagnostic and some uh, research and see if you can figure out what's going, what's going on with it. Same thing with the six cylinder. You know, if you got you got six cylinders, if it's a PO uh, 301, 304, 305, or 306, that says it's a PO uh, 306, then you just go to number six cylinder and start there and see if you can find out why it's uh, causing that issue. And if the uh, if you have an eight cylinder engine and if you have a PO, let's say five or six or a PO seven showing up, then you just go to that cylinder and you will start diagnosing uh, things and checking wires and plugs and go from there. Now, like I said, if you just have a PO 300, that's a little more difficult to uh, work on and try to figure out. And that's what I am going to do today. I don't have any other code showing up. I don't have a PO 301, 2, 3, or 4 showing up. If I had a PO 300 and maybe a, say a PO 304, then I'll know to go right to that cylinder and figure it out. But this one here is sort of like saying, the computer saying, hey, you know what? I don't like the way this engine's running, so I'm just going to throw a code and I'm going to say, oh, your cylinders are misfiring. It's up to you to figure it out. But in worst case scenarios, you will get an individual code telling you which si a cylinder that is actually misfiring, if it's a PO 304 or 305 or 306. Those are easy codes to actually work on. So in a nutshell, that's what we're doing here today. So we're going to tackle this PO 300 and see if we can figure out what's going on because I don't know what cylinder is misfiring. It just says they're all misfiring. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do, since I have a coil on top and I have my plug wires and everything here, it's going to be pretty easy for me to do. Now, you may have coil packs. This process will work just the same. Just take your coil pack, your coil pack out or your plug wire, get your screwdriver and start this up. And let's ground this and see if it's getting uh, sparked. And we're going to do all four of them that way. Okay, we got the engine running and here's a uh, spark plug and uh, wire number one. I'm and we're firing. You can hear it snapping there, so we got fire there. Let's go to the next one. Okay, here's number two. I don't know if you can hear that. It's firing just fine. See that spark there? So let's go to number three. Okay, here's number three. Let's see if we're getting spark. Yes, we're getting spark because it died there, so we'll go ahead and check number four out. 
And now we'll do number four. Now, if you want to leave the vehicle running, if you don't touch the car, just pull the wire off. You may get shocked or knocked on your butt. But in theory, if you don't touch the frame of the car with your other hand, you're okay. And you can hear that snapping noise. And you see that fire there? So this wire is okay. And that's, and that's the same process that you would do for your coil. You just pull it out and ground it and see if it's firing. So I know all my wires are good and I know my coil is good. So now we'll go to the next step. Okay, now the next step, we're going to pull all these plugs out. We're going to look at every one of them individually and see if they're okay. Now, when you pull your coil packs out and your wires, make sure there's no oil because a lot of times oil will leak and if you get a gasket that's getting bad, antifreeze will leak back in here and it'll short out the plug. So definitely make sure these are dry and they look fine. And you can see mine look great. And that one looks good. And if you want to put new plug wires, go for it. But coil packs are a little more expensive. But if you go online and do a little bit of research, especially on eBay and some of the other sites, I've seen brand new eight coil packs for less than $60. So they're pretty inexpensive. And that's a good excuse to get your car tuned up. So now we're going to go ahead and pull these plugs out. We're going to look into every one of them. Okay, so here we go. We're going to pull all four spark plugs out and make it a little faster. I'm using my cordless tool. And I didn't use that to break those plug, plug wire, those spark plugs loose. I used a ratchet. And now, these are lifesavers, magnets. Let's pull these out. There's number one, a little hot. Number two, hot, hot, hot. Number three, and number four. Well, they're pretty warm. They're not terribly hot. All right, now let's look at these plugs. Pull them up here. Try to hold them. And now. Let's check these plugs out. Check them for cracks around the top of the uh, insulator. Make sure there's no cracks. That plug there is a little dark, but it's not terrible. Um, this one is uh, pretty clean. This one looks pretty clean. And that one's pretty clean. But if I hold them to the light, just about like that, they look about all the same. So I don't see anything unusual, no wear, no, nothing broken. All the insulators are good, they're not cracked, so I'm rolling out the spark plugs at this point. Now, since you got your spark plugs out, do yourself a favor. If you have a PO 1 through 8, depending on what size engine or cylinders you have, or how many cylinders you have in your engine, do a compression check. Because if you have a PO, let's say PO, uh, 300, uh, PO 305 or 6, go to that cylinder. Do a compression check because you could have a burnt valve. I've seen a lot of cases where burnt valves will cause a lot of problems and people will be replacing plugs and wires. And really all you're doing is throwing money in the vehicle for nothing. So let's get to uh, that. We'll go ahead and do a compression check real quick and we'll see what this uh, engine is actually telling me. Okay, now I've got my compression uh, checker gauge here hooked up. And before you go doing that, make sure if you have a wire going to your coil, just unplug it so you don't uh, cause the engine to accidentally take off on you. Or find your fuel uh, pump uh, relay or the fuse and just unplug it. So the idea is you don't want your engine to run, you just want to crank it over. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to check all four of these cylinders and we're going to write it down here and see what we actually get. Okay, and now we're on number four. You just might as well watch this one. And there we go, peeps. And we are done. So let's look at the results on this number four. Cylinder looks like it's about 150, 160. Now we'll call it 160 PSI. So let's check out the chart. All right, we'll clear this, take this out. Get this off the side, and here is our test. And as you can see, this is a dry test. Number one, 165. Cylinder number two, 175. Cylinder number three, 165. And cylinder number four, 160. That is a very good, healthy engine, folks. This is like you going to the doctor and the doctor taking the stethoscope putting it on your heart, finding out just how 
well you are. This is what we're doing to this engine. This is a good healthy engine. So at this point I am not really too concerned. Now if you had one of these cylinders that was really low then you got problems. You probably got a burnt valve, maybe an intake or an exhaust valve or even a blowing head gasket. So at this point there's really not a whole lot more to do. Now there is a couple other things here that we need to look at to narrow this issue down. Okay, now I got all my plugs back in, they're tight. Now at this point, if you unhooked any wires to keep the engine from running while doing that compression check, make sure you go ahead and hook them up so you don't forget later. And if you unhooked your fuse for your fuel pump or your relay, make sure you go back in and reconnect it. And now we'll simply go ahead and put our plugs back in. Like I said, check your bottom of your coils or your wires, make sure there's no oil or anything on them. And check your wires, make sure there's no cuts or cracks in them. We'll put all these back in here real quick and next what we need to do since I know I don't see any issue up here and it's a PO 300 which I said earlier was a very difficult code to figure out whatever's causing the code to come up it's affecting the entire system so there's only two other things that could be timing and fuel so let's check out the timing now if you have a PO 300 now some vehicles will say that code also represents one tooth off on the belt timing belt now i've had that happen in other vehicles but rarely does that ever happen if you get a couple of teeth off the engine will run like crap and it'll die it won't run at all but my engine runs really good and this belt has uh, been replaced not long ago so i know it's not a timing belt issue and matter of fact there is a place where you can have to do an inspection here and get in here and check the timing and put it up on number one cylinder and all that but that's something that you can do research on for your particular vehicle now the only other thing we have left is the fuel system so one thing i will say this vehicle does start awful hard okay now having said that now one other thing i want to quickly discuss here is the emission systems now if you have this code rarely have i ever seen the emissions to be the cause of it if you have a emission problem you're going to get a po 400 to uh, 448 I believe it is uh, rarely do I ever see emissions causing a PO 300 it's usually electrical or it is gas related even vacuum lines yeah it could cause I've seen that a few times so basically check all your vacuum lines and if you have emissions up here uh, some hoses and just make sure they're all working okay and while the car is running vehicles running get you a little spray and spray in there and if you hear the idle change a little bit or if you hear hissing you might have a leak uh, causing that PO 300 I know I didn't talk about the injectors reason why that's pretty much a process of elimination if your vehicle runs fine idles fine you know we'll have a dead miss a shaking miss then the injectors are usually okay if you have a dead miss then pull this wire off and see if the idle changes on the engine that's a simple way to test your injectors but rarely do i ever see these calls in a po 300. all right guys well i'm back after a few days kind of got sidetracked and had to get some other things done but i did finally get the po 300 fixed on this uh, vehicle and hopefully these steps that i've showed you so far will help you to narrow your PO 300 down. Now, uh, what I've done so far, uh, you've seen here in the video. Now, uh, off video, I went and uh, did uh, check the uh, crank sensor. And when I pulled the crank sensor out of the back of the bottom of the engine, the uh, little metal sleeve that goes over it, well, it came off. And I had a new one, so I stuck a new crank sensor in it just so I wouldn't have to deal with that no more. It wasn't a big deal. It was only like $13 and i checked my fuel pressure now this thing has been shut off for about five minutes and when i disconnect the uh, fuel line here i should have all kind of fuel pressure in here but i'm getting nothing look at that absolutely no fuel pressure so i checked the fuel pressure i had a leak on the tank a little rusty line about like that so i cut it off replaced it with a four inch uh, piece of uh, tubing fuel line and um, i actually had a uh, fuel pressure gauge so i thought i'd check the fuel pressure and when i did fuel pressure in the back of the tank went from uh, 60 down to zero in about 20 seconds so um, I've got a fuel pressure regulator in the back and I've ordered one and it should be here and on these models the fuel pressure and the uh, fuel filter is one unit and I'm going to make a separate video on how to replace that a little bit later now having said that uh, the car um, still ran fine that low pressure fuel pressure typically doesn't cause a 300 po 300 code what usually causes a po 300 is something electrical now um, i went and 
I, the only thing left I had to check was my uh, cam sensor, which is right there. I had a new one, and I stuck it in, and it turned out uh, the light came back on, the PO300. So I thought, well, I'm not going to leave that in there. I'll just put the old one back in because there was nothing wrong with it. So I put the old one back in it, but as I was putting it in, I noticed some of those wires that go on that crank on the uh, cam sensor there was kind of brown. So I kind of played around with them and, you know, looked at them and couldn't find nothing really wrong with them. So I hooked everything back up. And would you believe I've driven this thing almost 150 miles and that light, check engine light, the PO300 code has not come back. So apparently there was some kind of a short in this plug going into the cam sensor. So if you have a PO300, check your wires, make sure they're not burnt. One of them may have been burned or something, but... By me kind of taking it off and unhooking it and putting it back in, I may have made a contact uh, on that wire down there, and it's working fine. So I'm going to leave it alone for now. But uh, apparently the issue was up here. So uh, and I didn't have a check engine light for the uh, cam sensor, which is kind of weird. But um, I did do a fuel pressure check, and like I said, my fuel pressure is basically nothing on this thing. But it is running, and I will have my new fuel pressure regulator and filter here in a day or so and I'll make a video on it and it actually sits on the tank and it's kind of a interesting little setup so um, other than that I'm happy it seems to be doing okay now and I just wanted to kind of wrap this video up because I was running out of uh, options and I couldn't figure out what was going on and usually I can figure these things out and like I said it turned out to be this cam sensor here um, this one here has four bolts on it let me move some wires so you can see it there's one bolt there and there's one back here in the back i apologize there's so many freaking wires on these cars on these little two o's there we go maybe you can see it there <coughs> and there's four wire four bolts that hold that on there and some other models just have two bolts that hold the cam uh sensor on, on there so I'm happy. You know, it's Saturday, so I'm going to go uh, do some other things, do some painting on my house and my rental, and hopefully uh, get this thing all wrapped up. And It should be okay. Let me start it up real quick. Well, I think I can start it. I just have the air cleaner off. It should be all right. Well, actually, i got to put this bolt in because, yeah, don't ask me why. Stupid design. That bolt that holds that air cleaner down, it sucks air if you don't put the bolt in. Oh, and I've put probably 150 miles on it in the last day or so, and you can see, sometimes it starts up fast, sometimes it doesn't because of that fuel pressure, it's low, but the check engine light's there, and you can see it's still off. So, if it comes back on, I'll give you guys an update, but uh, I'm happy, and you can see it actually works. There it's on, so the light does work, so... Uh, I don't know. Kind of weird. It turned out it apparently was just a burnt wire or something going up into that cam sensor. And by me moving those wires around, it just made a, it just made contact again and it's working. And when you buy these cam sensors on these vehicles, they do give you a piggy tail wire. And uh, I went online and did some research, and people do have trouble with those wires going into that cam sensor there that does give people problems. All right, well, that's enough rambling on. When I get my fuel regulator and fuel um, filter combo for the tank, which sits back here in front of this back wheel, I'll make a video on it and all that, but I uh, just want to give you guys an update if you're having a PO300. Hey, don't pull your hair out. Just uh, do process of elimination until you figure it out. And uh, it does help to have an engine uh, code reader like you saw earlier in my uh, video there and you can get those for 20 bucks now i mean they're getting really cheap so it's a beautiful day saturday out here i'm gonna go do some other projects so until my next video good luck on your po300s and uh just take your time at it until you figure it out i will see you guys later